Joining us now is Democratic Senator Chris Coons, who serves on the Judiciary Committee. And Senator, I know you've been watching the hearings in the Senate. You'll no doubt see some of the House today. And you're focused on next week, a hearing in your own committee that deals with this, uh, another different aspect of this, and it has to do with the rise of white supremacy. And you and some of your colleagues have written a letter to the FBI Director Christopher Wray, who will testify about your serious concerns about whether the FBI is allocating law enforcement and intelligence resources in a manner that reflects the scale of the threat posed by violent white supremacists, whom DHS has called the most persistent and lethal threat in the homeland. Specifically, what's your concern here? Well, FBI Director Chris Wray will be in front of the Judiciary Committee next week. Uh, he's someone who was appointed under the previous administration and who did come and testify to us about the threat uh, that domestic violent extremism poses. After the tragic incidents of January 6th, after an armed and angry mob stormed the capital of the United States, uh, we should have a clearer focus on just how much this is a priority for law enforcement, uh, for domestic uh, engagement. Uh, and part of what we're looking for the FBI director to tell us is, are they dedicating enough resources to understanding this threat, to uh, responding to this threat? Um, do they need any additional authorities or not? Do they need additional resources or not? So that was essentially uh, the point of the letter, but it's also the point of the hearings. Uh, the hearings that you just referred to that were, I believe, yesterday are talking about how do we secure the Capitol, um, what happened here at the Capitol. Next week, we'll be talking about our entire country and the real challenge of the rise of white supremacists uh, and uh, domestic violent extremism. I think part of the concern is that there are leaders who say there is no problem, there is no rise. Um, look, you know, Tucker Carlson holds no elective office, but he might as well with the authority and reach he has over some of your colleagues uh, in, in the Congress. And he went on TV and said, there's no evidence that white supremacists were involved in, in the insurrection of the U.S. Capitol. Well, all these, these law enforcement officials testified yesterday said absolutely, yes, they were involved and behind it. But, but how do you deal with the revisionism? Well, John, one of our real challenges here is a disagreement about basic facts. Uh, tens of millions of Americans in recent polls have said that they think the assault on the Capitol was carried out by leftists, uh, by Antifa, uh, by folks who were merely dressed up as Trump supporters. Uh, I'll tell you, everything that I've seen and heard um, strongly proves uh, that the folks who were carrying Confederate battle flags, the folks who were wearing uh, signs and shirts and flags that supported uh, both Donald Trump and much more extremist views um, were, many of them, white supremacists and nationalists, folks who held extreme political views, were central to the events at the Capitol. They're also among the most threatening folks in terms of our domestic security. I'll remind you, the governor of Michigan was nearly kidnapped and killed by a group of a dozen folks who were members of some of these extremist organizations. The FBI has briefed many of us on that incident. Um, that's a well-known public fact, but is not well and widely accepted, as you put it by Tucker Carlson and others, that there is a real threat uh, from domestic violent extremists who are white supremacists. You know, you brought it up, this idea of the false flag thing. Marjorie Taylor Greene, Congresswoman from Georgia, was one of the people suggesting that there was a game of dress up happening on, on, on the insurrection where Antifa was dressed as MAGA supporters there. Well, CNN did an investigation that published overnight, K-File, which actually found a friend of Marjorie Taylor Greene, and I'll just play that video if you haven't heard it yet, who says, no, 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 this wasn't Antifa, this was me and I'm a Trump supporter, listen. Right. <laughs> we were all there. It was not Antifa and it was not BLM. It was Trump supporters that did that yesterday. I'm the first to admit it. Being one myself. So given that, and leave Marjorie Taylor Greene aside for a second where she belongs, um, but Senator Ron Johnson, um, how do you explain why he has been reading into the congressional record these conspiracy theories? Why do you think he's doing it? What's driving him? Well, we have tens of millions of Americans who believe these conspiracy theories and who are um, engaging with and supporting members of Congress uh, who will advance them. One of our real challenges, John, is the last four years we had a president uh, who daily uh, tweeted and uh, pronounced um, things that just weren't true. 
That was an assault on science, and that's had tragic consequences for us in terms of our national pandemic response, but it was also an assault on the news media and on truth itself. And one of the consequences is we've now got a significant portion of our country uh, that just doesn't believe anything that yeah. they hear from the so-called mainstream media uh, or from folks who are centrists. I will long remember the moment when Senator Mitt Romney stood up in the chamber on January 6th and said to those of his own party who were challenging the election that what they needed to do was to not continue to indulge their constituents in baseless conspiracy theories that Trump won, but to tell them the truth. Part of getting the truth out there would be a 9-11 style commission to investigate right. the insurrection, which I know you support. How bipartisan should it be? Because the proposal right now that Nancy Pelosi, House Speaker, is floating would be uneven. Right. It would be there would be seven appointees from Democrats, including congressional leaders in the White House and four from Republicans. The 9-11 commission itself was split 50 50. So why not 50 50, Senator? Well, John, the leaders of the 9-11 Commission have said that part of why it was so successful was that it was even, it was balanced, uh, and it was led by folks who were well-respected and well-regarded, who had a reputation for working across the aisle. I think it's important that we have a balanced uh, January 6th Commission, a commission that looks into um, all the events that led up to the riot at the Capitol and this baseless theory uh, that Trump won the election. Uh, but it's going to have to be done by folks who are not currently um, serving or uh, seeking office, folks who are not politically motivated in how they get to the bottom of this. This is important. It's one of the key ways, John, of how we come together as a country. Joe Biden ran on unifying our nation. And to unify our nation, we have to lay bare the ways in which we just haven't believed each other. Joe Biden was legitimately elected president of the United States, and we need to help the American people accept that fact. So you think the commission should be 50-50? Yes. Senator Chris Coons from Delaware, thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you, John.